how do you define broken? Like if you have to define it, how do you define it? And how does a person know if they are broken in order to begin that, you know, that healing process? Well, I'm going to say because the book is called Once Broken Mm -hmm. and none of us can ever be broken. Mm -hmm. We, it's the thoughts that we bring to ourselves and make true. It's what we think we become, right? Mm -hmm. And so doing this work for over 18 years of social work, um, I've come to realize that we only lose our power if we give it away. Mm -hmm. And that means losing self-control. So if you don't have self-control and you feel like you need assistance in waking up in the morning, you need assistance with now someone helping you prepare your meals, this is where it's gone really bad now because you've lost sight of who you are. And sometimes the reason why we lose sight of who we are because we're afraid to ask for help and we look to others to validate how we're feeling. We also compare ourselves to others to see if we match up to what they are. But we don't, we're not, you know, we're not looking inward, right? We're not trusting ourselves because we rely on all the resources that are outside of us. What are some of the services that you might offer? Okay. Well, the first thing we do first is a consult. I need to know if I am the right fit for you and what you're looking for, if I can give it to you. Because everyone has different training. I'm... I use CBT, cognitive behavior therapy, mm. and trauma informed therapy. Also, um, EMDR, which is eye movement desensitization reprocessing therapy. Mm. And that is all to do with trauma because I specialize in sexual trauma, per se. It's not that I don't deal with anxiety, mm. depression, um, cu- uh, couples therapy individual therapy based on workplace issues, Mm -hmm. right? Racial trauma. There's a variety of ways of people that come to me, but what I offer, I always tell them my main focus is Mm self-care. So I could be so fancy doing all these therapies, but what I'm going to teach you is to take care of yourself because you can experience death. You can experience um, an illness. Mm -hmm. You can be going through issues at work. If we don't know what we need to cope, we're just going to continue the same cycle, behave the same way. What, what purpose does that serve? It doesn't serve any purpose. We're not, we're not fixing or healing anything, right? So I always tell my clients, when you come to me, you already got all the power. I'm just going to guide you how to maneuver your power. You've wow. lost it along the way. Maybe you forgot a little thing here and there. You have everything that you need. I am now the investment person who's now going to take you on that journey. And we're both going to work together to make sure that you have the tools when you're at work and somebody's all up in your face. When your boss talks to you and mistreat you, you know how to respond. When your husband is a narcissist and you don't even understand how to communicate, I'm going to teach you how to take care of yourself. Right. It's at the end of the day, I always tell my clients, I'm going to teach you how to love you to the point that you remember you and show up for you before you show up for everybody else. Your website, you stated on there and I love this, but it said uh, the transformation begins when the work on self is applied daily. Yeah. What is one thing that somebody can take away? Listen to this episode that they can work on daily, like an an exercise or an activity or something, um, uh, a suggestion or a message, anything that you can share that they can take and do on a daily basis. I'm really asking for me, by the way, just. (laughs) (laughs) No problem. (laughs) Well, you know, we, we, we go through different seasons and we, we transform based on where our, where we are in our lives. And so I always encourage my clients to tell me, what do you like doing? Oh, I don't do anything. No, no, no. What do you like doing? Okay, tell me when you were a little girl or a little boy, what was your favorite thing to do? Oh, I love to do puzzles and I love to draw and I love to paint. And so when I go back to when they're little and they said to tell me all these things that they enjoy doing, I said, okay, why are you not doing them now? I got time. Oh, okay. So when are you going to make time? Because this is serious. I was telling them, this is a serious step you're taking with me. 
because I'm going to hold you accountable. So the things that bring you joy, the things that make you smile, the things that make you feel good is what you're going to put in your daily practice. Mm -hmm. Because when you lose those sight of those, you go into a cycle. I'm not enough. I don't deserve. I don't get enough sleep. I'm unhappy. I can't take this life. I don't want to be here because you're not filling your cup. You know the saying, make sure you don't use an empty cup or use out the empty cup. I always tell people, when you fill that cup, you're filling it for you first. You're not filling up for your wife. You're not filling up for your children. And I tell people, everybody's got to have boundaries, everyone. Because if you don't create healthy boundaries, that means everybody gets to use up all of your energy and you're left with none. So a daily thing that I do I have to do my affirmations every morning. I got to fill my, I got to fuel myself up, right? And after I do my affirmations, it's either I do my morning journaling or I do my night journaling. But journaling has to happen because that's what saved me to continue my life today. Oh, wow. So learning to journal is, people always think that it's a difficult thing because they never had to apply it yet. They never had to take the chance to write their thoughts on paper. Scientifically, when we use pen and paper, both sides of our brain is operating at the same time. Could you imagine how much power comes out in paper when you're using both sides of your brain? And so there's gratitude journaling. There is venting journaling when you just release all that's happening in your days. There is, you know, journaling where you want to manifest. There is forgiveness journals. There's so many ways of journaling. That is for me. But making sure that you drink your water, making sure that you're eating what you need, making sure you're not missing a meal, making sure you're taking time out to breathe. Breathing is part of my practice. It's part of what I concentrate on most out of everything is because we don't take time to just pause mm. and breathe. Bringing oxygen to our brain centers us. It's the first thing we do when we enter into this world. And so just by going by your day, we're just barely taking an air, barely taking an air. And within the time that you're at work or wherever you are, you are becoming anxious. You're getting irritated. You're getting angry. You're getting hungry. You're getting stressed. And we have yet to say, okay, I'm going to take five minutes and just go sit down and breathe and, you know, come into myself and center myself and just be. Mm 